Hello family, I'm Ebony Covert, and here at GTV, you know we believe in making a difference. We also believe in being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ in everything we do. You can't look around, you can't even blink without seeing someone in a GTV shirt that's not making a positive change in our community. So if you haven't been able to song yet today in our ministry, right now is your time. That's right family, it's giving time. And it's nothing like knowing you're giving into a ministry that's actually making change. Even in the midst of COVID-19, we are feeding people who are hungry. We are finding new and creative ways to serve our community even better. So listen, there are many ways to give your tithes and offering, and as always, thank you for tuning in and enjoy the word. Oh man, God bless you, greater true vine. It is a blessing to see you all here. Such a blessing. We truly know if it had not been for the Lord, it was on our side. We truly know we would have no idea where would we be. Can y'all help me sing that song right there? Little simple song goes, if it had not. Take it to church now. Say, I'm a soldier.
praises for what he does, for continuing to waking us up every morning, for blessing us, and we, it's our job to just continue to praise him in and out of season, in and out of season, because he's been so good to us, God of a second chance, third chance, fourth chance, fifth chance, sixteenth chance, anybody just want God to just make you over again? just want God just begin to just just worship with me as we do this song because we truly want God to just make us over again it goes you know my I can no longer hide. I let you down so many times. Sin freshly crucified. Thought that I had a plan. figured out but the more that you try to be by my side the more I push you out can y'all help me say that? just say Lord make me Anybody just want to make him over again? To make me over again. Lord, I need you to make me over again. Oh, make me over again. Second verse, it goes something like this. It says, time after time I found you. Pierced your side when they already nailed you. Jesus healed my open wound. I just want to be more like you. Father, I let you 
I believe that worship is what God is to you. It's a representation of what he's brought you through. It's a reflection of what he has kept you from. When, he, when people say seen and unseen danger, especially in a time like this, you just want to begin to just give him all the praise that you can while we can. While the blood is still uh, going warm in our veins, it is our job, it is our duty to just continue to worship and to continue to give him praise for what he is. Not what he's done, but just simply for who he is. Make me over, make me over again. Make Come on, right where you are, begin to worship him right now. If you want him to make you over again, come on. Come on, just begin to open up your mouth. Come on, Holy Spirit. Come on, make me over again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, I feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Oh, I believe that it is somebody's prayer this morning. Lord, make me over again. Ooh, I made so many mistakes in my life. Made so many mistakes in my past. And Lord, I know I haven't done everything that I'm supposed to do. But Lord, make me over. I'm asking you, come on. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, GTV Nation. So glad that you tuned in with us this morning. Hallelujah. Anybody glad that God has blessed us to see another year? I wish I had somebody. That God gave you another chance. Come on, I can't hear nobody. He, somebody ought to say, he gave me another chance. Hallelujah. 
Listen, well, thank you for tuning in. It's giving time. It's giving time. Those of you that are watching online, there are many ways to give. I want to thank you, GTV, for just being so consistent. You know who you are. You never stop giving, even in a pandemic, even when the church was just doing virtual service. You never stop serving. You never stop giving. And that's why I love about you. I love my church. I don't know about you, but I love my church. Hallelujah. And so I want you to give today. If you want to be blessed, give your tithes and your offerings. Well, we're teaching, do you know who you are and do you know what you have? And we discovered so far that we have the peace of God and we have peace with God. Romans 5 and Philippians 4 and then last Wednesday we found out we have access to God. Mm. We don't have to go through any priests. We don't have to go through anybody to get to Jesus. Mm, no angels, no high priests. We can talk to him in the morning. We can talk to him in the evening. We can talk to him in our car all throughout the day. And then last Sunday, we found out that we have power over sin. I don't know if that bless you, but you ought to just tell somebody, I'm free from that. I'm I'm free from that. But today I want to push you. Let's go to Ephesians 1. Ephesians, the first chapter, beginning with the first verse. And it said, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Stop right there. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus and who are faithful in Christ Jesus. Right away, he called you something that you were slipping on. Right away, you, you minimized it. You should have just ran up out of here. The Bible says to what? Saints. If Paul was writing us, writing to us today, he would say to the saints at Greater True Vine or to the saints in DeSoto. If he would have been writing today to us, he would have uh, called us saints. You can be seated. You are a saint. Do you know who you are? Do you know what you have? Well, Pastor, I, I kind of know it. Do you? <laughs> no, you don't. You are a saint. Pastor, I know that. You do? Okay, I'm, I'm about to mess you up because don't tell me you haven't heard somebody or even you said it yourself. You said this in an attempt to try to be kind of humble and try to prove that you don't think that you all of that. And they were talking to somebody and they were like, man, you know, uh, I go to church. But I ain't a saint or nothing. <laughs> I ain't coming across like I'm a saint. I done made my share of mistakes and I love God. I, I, I go to church. I, I don't come across. I ain't a saint or nothing. Yes, you are. You are a saint. That The person who told you that just said, or you, just said you were not what God said you was. Mm, you just missed that. And the enemy loved it because the first thing you said was, I ain't a saint. You know, I go to church and, uh, and stuff, but, but I ain't no saint. I made some mistakes. I don't care what mistakes you done made. You're not a saint based on your behavior. You're not a saint based on your life. You are a saint based on Jesus' death. Y'all not catching this. I got to push this into your head because I'm tearing down some stuff this year. I'm tearing down some stuff strongholds and that's a process because you're not catching this yet because you're still tripping on the mistakes that you done made you know more dirt on you than anybody know and when you know you've been been some places that you know you shouldn't have been some people that you shouldn't have kicked it with some things that that you have did that you sad about it's hard to believe that you are all of these good things that God said you are when you've done so many bad things because you've been told that 
that a person who is good wouldn't have done all of that. But let me tell you something. There's no good, not one. The Bible says there's none righteous. All of us, our righteousness are as filthy. I'm in Isaiah now. And Isaiah said we're like filthy rags. And this is critical, everybody. So I'm a saint. Everybody say out loud, I'm a saint. Come on, you ought to type that. Those of you who are watching, you ought to type in the comment, I am a saint in spite of my mistakes. The word saint is Hagar, which means set apart. It means to, to uh, consecrate. It's sacred. It's holy. Set apart. That's what you are. You have been set apart by God. It means sacred. It means God considers you sacred. You're holy. Not in your own personal holiness, but in the holiness of Christ, which has been imputed upon you. You have the righteousness of God on you. Get used to saying stuff like this this year. Come on, one more time say it out loud I'm a saint I'm a saint because God called me one has nothing to do with how I feel or uh, I'm whatever God says that I am that's what I want to do to get a hold of y'all I'm one because God says that I am don't get mad at me get mad at God he called me a saint he told me that I'm free from sin he told me I have peace he told me I have access I'm just walking in what God says I have and what I am I'm just getting teaching right now from my pastor. I'm just receiving the word of God. Come on one more time loud as you can. Just shout, I'm a saint. So verses 3, Ephesians 1, watch this. It says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Look at it now. Blessed be the God and Father Mm, that first word, look at it. That first word says blessed. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us. Here it is. Blessed us. Again, that's, that's two different Greek words. That's, that's two different words. Those two words blessed, they're different. The first blessed that you see is, uh, is eulogia, of which we get the word eulogy. Mm. It means to speak well of. Blessed be the God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Or let's speak well of God the Father, the Father of Jesus Christ. Let's speak well of him. Let's bless his name, eulogy. But then it says, watch it. You see it on the screen? Who has blessed or given us, that's a different Greek word, with every spiritual blessing. Mm, in the heavenly places. And that's what I want to spend my time on today. He has blessed us. Woo, you didn't shout. See, see, you didn't shout. He has blessed us. See, if, if, if I would have told you that he said he blessed us with $10 million, be honest, who would have shouted? Mm-hmm. Because why, why come I didn't get, whoa, 10 minutes ago, five minutes ago? What, when I just read that, because I just told you he has blessed us with every spiritual blessings, every one of them. This is amazing, y'all, because Jesus Christ died on Calvary, paid for all of our sins, and then the day that he got up, we got up with every spiritual blessings. So when Jesus, catch this now, when Jesus got up from the grave, he then imparted to every Every believer that will ever accept him, every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Now, the question that begs asking is, what are these spiritual blessings? What, 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 what are they? And is there a difference? What, what you mean spiritual blessings versus material blessings? What's the difference? What's the difference, Pastor? I have every spiritual blessing according to the text. I was reading an article one time trying to get more perspective on what I'm teaching this, this month. And this editor says that God is no longer giving out material blessings. <laughs> the material blessings were from, uh, the, uh, uh, from Abraham under the old covenant. Under the new covenant, he's no longer uh, giving out material blessings, but spiritual blessings. Now, I know what he meant, but I disagree with this brother. 
I disagree. No, God is still giving out material blessings. And I wanted to tell that editor, Elder Webb, if I could have met him, I said, no, uh, you need both. <laughs> I wish I had somebody. Because, watch this, is the way, I want all the spiritual blessings, but sometimes, Sister Constance, I need a car. Y'all, y'all, y'all want that? I don't need a spiritual car. Uh, yeah, y'all, y'all, uh, I need my house note paid. Y'all, y'all, oh, uh, not my spiritual house note. I, 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 my, my real house note paid. I need some groceries, not bread of heaven. I need bread on the table. So, so don't be telling me God is not giving out material blessings because I need some of them too. I wish somebody would just give me some hearts and just wave your hands and say, I know you talking to right, I know you talking to right, Pastor. But, but also, I also understand what he was saying in that book. He's saying it's not so much a material stuff as it is spiritual. And I really want to park there today because I need you to catch this. I have, not what I'm waiting on. I, 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 I have, not, not waiting on it. I have every spiritual blessing that I need to be a successful saint. Okay, Galatians 5 and 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit. Woo, but really it's saying, but the proof. Somebody say proof. The proof of the Spirit is love, joy, come on, peace, patience. The proof of the Spirit. Some say the proof of the Spirit is speaking in tongues. But I know people who speak in tongues but don't speak to me. So I said, uh, Sister Hunter, I said, that can't be the proof of the Spirit because I just heard that, heard her speak in tongues and she walked right past me and didn't speak to me. The proof of the Spirit. Watch, watch this. See, you watch this, Brother Hunter, you see a banana tree. You see a banana tree and you see all these bananas hanging off that tree. And um, you like, what, what kind of tree is that? What kind of tree is that? It's bananas. Why? Because you see bananas hanging off of that tree. And then you identify an apple tree because it has these apples on it. And here's what's crazy. It, it, it's all, if all of this stuff that we just read in Galatians is hanging off of you, no one can deny that you're rolling with Jesus. The proof, which means not your t-shirt that says I'm a part of Greater True Vine Church and, and not that cross that's big enough uh, to choke a dracul around your neck. None of that. No. What's going to tell me that you're rolling with Jesus is I look at you and you've got certain fruit hanging off of you to the point you never told me that you went to church and I asked you about church. Uh, yeah, if I walk up to you on your job and say, you know what, uh, something different about you, Brother Quincy, it's something different about you, how you carry yourself. And when they did the layoff thing, you never change, you never budge. And, and I know that you've been through some things, but you just carry yourself a little different. There's, there's a peace on you. There, there, and I know our boss is kind of racist, but you always pay and you always speak to people that is mean around here it's hard for me to act like that how do you do it and then you have a chance to say it's Christ in me <laughs> the hope of glory <laughs> but guess how they identified it because they saw the fruit somebody better receive this today everything that you see on this list you have you have all of that you see on Galatians 5 and 22 if you didn't have it uh, I would have tell you that you're waiting on it but you have it right now if you have the Holy Spirit you need to understand that I have the Holy Spirit because I can't do none of that that's on that list sister coach in my own power I can't be free from sin by my own power I can't have peace on my own power I need the Holy Spirit I need the Holy Spirit to just mat me okay uh, I, I had to go ghetto because I went Bible and y'all didn't say amen 
So I, I, I need to, I know it's kind of raw, but I, I need to do this. I, I need the Holy Spirit. I need him to run me. I, I know I'm going to raw, but y'all wasn't paying attention. So I need him to turn me out. <sighs> Okay, if you ain't never been turned out or never turned nobody out, then maybe you ain't going to catch this. But, but when somebody done turned you out, they kind of have you doing some stuff that you wouldn't normally do. But because they got your mind, you find yourself looking back saying, I can't believe I did that. For six years, I can't believe I left my daughter that night trying to catch up with that brother. I can't believe I dogged my mama talking about she don't understand that I'm in love with him. I can't believe some of the stuff that he took me. You know why? Because he had your mind. <laughs> and when somebody gets your mind, they get control of you. You can't have my body until you got my mind. <laughs> and in Ephesians... Chapter 4, verse 23. It really says, let God turn your mind out. <laughs> by renew by the spirit of your mind. <laughs> now, how do you know when God is macking you? Because you say, you know what? I ain't speaking to her. And he said, yes, you're going to speak to her. Oh, hey, how you doing, girl? <laughs> uh, you say, I ain't going to speak to her no more because she done ignored me three times. Holy Spirit said, say hi to her. Hey, how you doing this morning? <laughs> uh, I ain't forgiving him. He done, uh, he done made me mad. Uh, and the Holy Spirit go in there and you find yourself walking in that, in that room to your spouse. Uh, I, I'm sorry, baby. I, you, you know, <laughs> and they, they see the old you. <laughs> would never apologize but the new you is not running stuff no more as a matter of fact the old you wouldn't have been in church or unless alone watching online you say you know what I'm tired I just got off from work I done worked all night I done worked all day and then the Holy Spirit said I don't care how you feel you better get in your car drive to the Soto go to Greater True Vine and find out who you are and you say Holy Spirit I'm home hungry i'm tired but you got my mind now you running me yes lord yes lord somebody ought to shout he's running me he he's running me tell your neighbor i ain't running nothing no more <laughs> i ain't running nothing no more there was somebody that I wanted to sleep with and God said no. There was some people that I wanted to go off on but God said no. I didn't want to put no money in church but God said yes you will. I didn't want to do a whole lot of stuff but when God gets a hold of you. <laughs> Listen, the point that I'm making is this. We have all spiritual blessings well pastor that's beautiful but I don't feel no peace I don't feel no patience I'm in snapping at everybody around me and there's one person I kind of hate if it's not hate it's close to hate it's, it's, it's not a good thing whatever it is I feel pastor would you pray for me lay your hands on me because I'm believing God for joy pastor I'm not going to lay my hands on you and believe for what you already have. <laughs> oh, y'all ain't talking to me. I'm not going to pray for what has been given. Uh, see, there's some things, uh, uh, Sister Beck, we ain't got to pray for. There's something we ain't got to pray for. We have to appropriate. Woo, appropriate means I have it, but I need to appropriate here's an example let, 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 let's say for instance and uh brother Ron, you're, you're a teacher you understand this uh you design a new new lesson plan for the teachers and you give them this new lesson plan for uh the 2021 uh school year so they get in the classroom and the people start complaining about the old lesson plan and you say you know what do you mean they don't like the lesson plan well, they said they need a new lesson plan. Well, I gave you the new lesson plan. The problem is you guys have not appropriated what's been given. Okay, here's another one. Um, you ask a company to design a new website for you. 
So they done designed the website, uh, and the website is done. You paid for it. They gave it to you, and uh, the people say, you know what? You haven't changed your website, and you have the website already, but you won't launch it. So the issue, is it needing or appropriating? There are people watching me who I know you love God, but you have not appropriated it. Let me tell you why you haven't appropriated it. Because many of you, of you didn't know that you had it. Mm. Because you keep doing old stuff and having that old mindset and you never really knew who you were and what you have. I wish somebody would be honest and admit that I've been in church a long time and I've heard all the Bible stories. But let's keep it real. I got to keep it real, Pastor. I don't know exactly who I am. And because I don't know exactly who I am and what I have, I think the devil's been trying to play me. So I need to appropriate what I got. Because how in the world I'm nervous and he's the prince of peace uh, when he says my peace that I live leave with you and pastor I've been doing some stuff going out trying to get peace getting with brothers trying to get pre peace on the phone slipping in a DM Facebook and God got all the peace right here for me he has blessed ED bless us with every spiritual blessing let me give you three things about spiritual blessings before we run out of time number one spiritual blessings come from the holy spirit or they are of the spirit which again speaks the idea even before i teach it uh, i need you to go home tonight and say holy spirit fill me up <sighs> and if you already been filled with the spirit you say fill me again <laughs> because see, just because Ella Bowers, a person is filled up with gas and they go halfway to California and they run out of gas, do they go back home? What do they do? They just go and fill it up again. <laughs> you don't have to go back home. You, you, you halfway to Cali, you just got to pull in and get filled back up and keep on going. And sometimes on this Christian journey, <laughs> we get away from prayer. We get away from the word of God. And sometimes we don't feel his presence, but it doesn't mean that God is not there. We just got to get filled back up again. <laughs> so spiritual blessings are of the spirit. Number two, spiritual blessings are the very opposite of temporal blessings. They're, they are the blessings of the inner man, the blessing of the immortal. But out of all blessings, they're the most glorifying and satisfying, and they are different from material blessing. I told you, I told you earlier, I disagree with that uh, brilliant editor that wrote that book that God is not giving out those material blessings anymore because there are many places I do agree with him. We just don't uh, agree on that, okay? Uh, I disagree with this person who said that God is not giving out material blessings, but I do agree with him 100% that spiritual blessings are vastly superior over material blessings. And, and I'm talking about a, a, a Bentley, a big house, a million dollars. None of that is better than peace. But immature people, y'all ain't catching this, think that we got to have all of this stuff. Mm. And unless you get this stuff, you are a loser. That's what we've been taught. And none of us taught us, wait a minute, you can have all of that and not have no joy. Whew. And, and, and y'all know I don't preach phony here. Money makes life easier. I ain't going to preach phony. I need some money. I need some money right now. I need y'all to give me some money. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Money makes life easier. I ain't going to never change that. If me and Lady Colbert is fighting, I want us fighting with some money. I don't want to be in there. We fighting and say, and we ain't got no money. Y'all ain't trying to be, y'all Y'all don't want to be real. Have you ever had them argument? Well, you didn't do this yet, and we ain't got no money. 
But if we fight it, I want us to have a fight with some money. Y'all ain't talking to me. Spiritual blessings are very opposite than temporal blessings. Say temporal. Say temporary. Temporal blessings, exact, that's exactly what they are. Your car is temporal blessings. Your house is temporal blessings. Your, your bank account, everything you see. The scripture says those things which are seen are temporal and those things which are unseen are eternal. Those things which are seen, everything you can see is temporary, including me. In the next 75 years, unless you got a baby in your lap, just about all of us going to be dead. Temporary. The car you have now, temporary. It's but dust. Temporary. I told you this before, and you didn't catch it. Everything that I can see is not real. And the one thing that I can't see is the only thing that's real. People say, well, they were my friends. They shook my hand, took my money, but they wasn't real. I've never seen God in my life, but he's the realest thing I ever had in my life. All these people around me saying that they are real, but they lied. They talked about me. They divorced me. They broke up with me. My son don't have called me. My daughter ain't been seeing me for a while. But God said, but God that I've never seen in my life. And he's real deep down in my heart. How do you know it, Pastor? Because every now and then I can feel him. <laughs> oh, I'm trying. Oh, I better not do this. I, I better give you this third thing because I'm, I'm about to I feel a I feel a preach coming on. Spiritual blessings are vastly superior to material blessings. They're, they, they're permanent and perfect and eternal. They last forever. They are the, watch this, they are the very same nature of God. Spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings exist. And watch this, and they can be experienced both on earth and also in heaven. And because they both exist on heaven and earth, they translate kingdom. The kingdom of earth and the kingdom of God. Spiritual blessings, they go with me. My, uh, 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 material stuff, grandmama used to say, I've never seen an ATM riding behind a hearse. I, I've never seen anybody's money riding behind them to the funeral. It stays here. Lay not your treasures on earth where moth and dust can corrupt, but lay your treasures in heaven. What treasures in heaven? Spiritual blessings exist. They are vastly superior. Listen to me. I mean this. I want y'all to experience the peace of God. I want you to experience the joy of God because I'm telling you there are rich people who hate to go home. There are people who have stuff and don't have these spiritual blessings that the believer has. And in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5, he starts to give you some of these spiritual blessings. He said, you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings. Then in verse 3, then in verse 5, he gives you one of them. Number one, we are adopted as sons. Verse 5, he predestined us. To adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. And whenever you tell people that we are adopted as sons, the church never shouts. Because 99% of the church was not adopted. And when you haven't been adopted, you can't appreciate adoptions as much as somebody that lived in four or five foster homes that was split up from their parents and their siblings. And then one day somebody comes along and they say, you know what, I take you just like you are. Yeah, where my kids sleep, you gonna sleep. Huh? Where, where my kids eat, you gonna eat. Huh? Wherever they go to college, you are going to college. Huh? That's like a blended family piece. You, you you take somebody in and you got to take them just like they're yours. Uh, whatever you do for yours, you got to do for y'all looking at me crazy. See, the reason why you haven't shouted is because you don't realize you haven't read your Bible enough. I hate to bust your bubble, 
but you are not God's real child. You're his adopted child. The Jews are his real children. <laughs> the issue is, Sister Coates, they didn't want them. <laughs> so, what, so, what, so what God did was, he had a banquet one day and said, everybody, come to my party. But then nobody come to the party. So he told his dudes, listen, nobody won't come to my party. Go out in the streets and tell everybody I got food in here. I want you to go tell everybody that whosoever will. Since they don't want me, <laughs> ah, whosoever will, let him come. He came to his own, and his own received him not. But as many who have received him to them, gave them power to become sons and daughters of God. Paul said we've been grafted in. So let me tell y'all something. We are not the real children of Israel, but because they rejected him. Their rejection kicked the door open for us. And in his sovereignty, we've been grafted Gentiles in. So, so what's one spiritual blessing that you've been adopted? And you know what? I may not be the real child, but tell your neighbor, when they eat, I eat. Go ahead. <laughs> Come on. Tell them they got a bed, I got a bed. Come on. I'm just glad that I'm in the house. <laughs> Paul said you've been grafted in. And again, when you get mature, you're going to be saying, I may not have a husband yet. I may not have all the money yet. I'm, but, but I thank God that I've been adopted into the kingdom of God. That's not a money blessing. That's a spiritual blessing. That's not a relationship blessing. That's a spiritual blessing. And well, sir, I'm going to give you something else. I'm going to give you something else. Because not only am I adopted, but number two, we have redemption and forgiveness of our trespasses. All right, Ephesians 1 verse 7, let's look at it. Let's put some Bible on it. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of trespasses according to the riches of his grace. See, 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 not riches of his stuff. The riches of his grace. We have been redeemed. And when I say redeemed, you didn't shout. And I know why. Because you don't understand the totality of the Old and New Testament. Because, see, if you understood the Old and New Testament, that what redeem means, it is the idea of a ransom. It's the idea of someone who was a slave being bought out of slavery and somebody paid the ransom or redeeming them, redeem to redeem means to buy back, to, it means to purchase. Catch this, it is best depicted in the book of Hosea. Y'all know the Hosea, Reverend, Reverend Hosea, the minor prophet in the Old Testament. And in Hosea, God tells Hosea, I want you to marry a hooker. Hosea said, I ain't marrying no hooker. He said, yeah, you're going to marry a hooker. Why? Because I want her to cheat on you. Now, Hosea, I want her. She's going to have some babies by different brothers. And then I want you to take her back. Take her back? Yes. She's going to sleep with other people. And he said, take her back. Why? Because I want you to preach to Israel. And you can't preach to Israel what you can't feel. So, 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 Hosea, I want her to cheat on you. So you can tell Israel how she cheated on me. <laughs> and once she cheat on you, you won't be preaching from your head only. You're going to be preaching from your heart. <laughs> he said, take her back. Take her back. The problem, the problem is, he goes back together. Somebody else got him. Here's the cold-blooded part. Here's the cold-blooded part. She's up there on the selling block. That bad Coca-Cola-shaped body was now shriveled up. Those teeth that was white as a flock of sheep 
are now missing and gone. That, that, that hair that was long and shiny is now spotty and bald. And he looks at that girl who was his. Looking nasty. Looking nasty as she can look. And God said, take her back. The problem is, she now belongs to somebody else. Can you imagine your wife and you got to go in your pocket and buy back what should have never left you at all? Let's have church. But that's exactly what God did. Because you sold yourself to the devil. He had to send his son Jesus to buy back what never should have left him. Would you do me a favor? Would you just point at three people and say, I've been redeemed. I feel like having some church. Don't, don't, don't touch nobody. But just say, I've been redeemed. I've been born with a price. Jesus has changed my whole life. If anybody asks you just who I am, I want you to tell them I've been redeemed. Can I tell you, can I tell you who shout the loudest? The person who shouted the loudest is the person that sold themselves to sin the worst. The person that's shouting the loudest is the person knowing that they should never been bought back, but God gave you another chance. The person that's shouting the loudest is the person that been in bed that you shouldn't been in, visiting some spots you never should have visited, kicked it with some people you should never kicked it with, did some stuff that you shouldn't have done, but God brought you back, and now you may not have a bunch of stuff, but why don't you praise them? That you've been redeemed, that spiritual blessing. Would you do me a favor? Would you tell somebody that God brought me back? I should have lost it all, but God gave me another chance. Is there anybody here that know you should have had herpes and AIDS mixed together? You should have been in the penitentiary in the same asylum, but God reached down, brought you back, brought you back, took you back. Why you looking at me like God didn't redeem you? If you know you've been redeemed, don't wait, but open up your mouth, throw your head back, and shout spiritual blessings, spiritual blessings. I dare somebody to have church with me today. If God has been good to you, don't worry about your neighbor. Just tell your neighbor, you didn't buy me back. You wasn't there when he got me back. You wasn't there when he washed away my sins. You wasn't there when he rescued me from that toxic relationship. You wasn't there when he covered my mind. When the devil tried to take my mind. You wasn't there. Tell your neighbor. Whoop! I feel a shout coming on. I feel like having some church. I know you're tired, but have God been good to you? I'm trying to stop y'all, but I keep thinking about how far God brought me from. And if God has brought you all from a long way, I dare somebody on a Sunday morning to just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, every time I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. Excuse me, y'all, but I feel all right. Is there anybody here that can just point at somebody and say, neighbor, I'm not much, but I've been redeemed. Everything I am, God made me that. Everything I have, God gave it to me. Now you can sit there and be cute, or you can go preach it to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I feel a Psalm 27 
falling over me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is my strength. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies, tried to kill me, God brought me out of it. Somebody praise him like you should have lost it all. Praise him like this your last chance. Let everything that has breath praise. Praise the Lord. Don't wait till the battle is over. But shout right now. Come on. If the anointing has broke the yoke of your life, point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor, I'm free. I'm free. I'm free indeed. God gave me another chance. And if God gave you another chance, I dare somebody to open up your mouth and just holler, thank you. Come on, just say thank you for another day journey. Thank you for everything you've been. Now tell two people, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us rejoice and exalt his name. Come on, would you tell your neighbor, I'm reading songs right now. I've sowed in tears, but I'm reaping in joy because I should have been dead, but I'm still here. Excuse me, y'all. I'm trying to get out of here, but I feel all right. Can I get five people to say, neighbor, it's a new year. I know who I am and whose I am. I've been stuck too long, but I'm breaking out. It's my time for a greater anointing. It's my time for a greater miracle. It's my time for greater peace. Come on, I feel a breakthrough. Come on, I feel a breakthrough. Come on and praise him. Would you do me a favor? Tell your neighbor, say neighbor. Come on, y'all ain't doing, say neighbor. Just in case I don't make it next week, this might be my last chance, but I'm about to dance. Come on, where my dancers at? One, two, three. Woo. Come on. Woo. Come on, this might be my last chance. I can't wait till next Sunday. I can't wait till next week. But I got to dance. I feel the glory. I feel the glory falling. I dare somebody to shout until you get your breakthrough. I dare you to shout until you get your breakthrough. Come on and dance. Come on, dance. If you've been redeemed, shout. If you've been redeemed, shout. If you got joy, shout. If you got peace,
Somebody shout spiritual blessings. Come on, just shout, I got spiritual blessings. I got something that money can't buy. Thieves can't steal. Water can't drown. Fire can't burn. I got. I know somebody ought to say, I got it. I got it, I got it. Come on, somebody say, I got it. I got joy. I got peace. Even in the pandemic. Woo. I got peace. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In the midst of a pandemic, I got the peace of God. <laughs> when I should have lost it all. Millions didn't make it. But I'm the one that did. Spiritual blessing. Do you know what you have? Somebody ought to say, I got it, I got it. I got joy. Just because I'm not having a nervous breakdown don't mean that I'm faking. It don't mean that I'm out of my mind. It just means that I know a man named Jesus that told me he would keep me in perfect peace if my mind stayed on him. Woo. Glory. You have every spiritual blessing. got joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. I, I feel God in here. I feel a breakthrough. I feel a breakthrough right now. Oh, hey, Baba. Come on, why don't everybody lift those hands? Come on, let the tears flow. Let the tears flow. There's healing in your tears. Woo! They that have sown in tears shall reap Enjoy, enjoy. Father, we thank you today. We thank you that here at Greater True Vine, we do not have an identity crisis. We know who we are. We're saints. Not because of our behavior. Not because of our life. Because that's what you called us. The devil can't tell us who we are not. We belong to God. God, we know what we have here. We have access. We have peace. Not just any kind of peace. Not the peace that the world gives, but your peace, <laughs> your peace that surpasses all comprehension. Woo! Thank you for the peace. Thank you for every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. God, we give you glory. We give you praise. God, if there's somebody that's watching, pray for them now, God, that they will call that number. They will call and say, what must I do to be saved? I need to connect with a church. Thank you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, thank you for tuning in. Join us this Wednesday for Wednesday Night in the Word. God bless you and God keep you is my prayer. In Jesus' name. Come on, let's give God praise, everybody. Hallelujah. Well, saints, we're getting ready to go.
next Sunday. Don't forget, more people probably will be here.